hope today we have a new package here together with us. Oh yes, it's a huge difference, it's actually very right. Another Commodore Amiga 1200 machine with some yellow keys and some dirty cover that I think this is, <laughs> you have you seen, this key is much more white than others. Maybe this one has been replaced before. So let us uh, try to power on this machine and see if it will boot. So here is the machine and before we power it on we are just going to lift off this cover. Keyboard and a hard drive which is loose here and it is connected it has some kind of RAM expansion here this can be just start it up oh, he was talking about a loose key and it's there yeah. so it's stuck that is wiggling so what is the problem here so this one maybe is wiggling but the spring and everything is here, so the key seems to be complete. It is kind of loose. Everything is connected, so let me just try to power on the power supply. And can hear the hard drive. And a rubber screen here. Very nice! It has a lot of games. And the sound works perfect from this machine, it's not recapping. 
So that will be the thing I have to do and clean up this cover. The caps lock key, key is working. It's quite dirty. Otherwise the case itself is uh, does not have so much yellow. I think all this is uh, dirt. I think it will become very white after we give it a clean. compare with the one way air. This one, it's not uh, retro brighted, but it's uh, very not cool. uh, retro brighted, but it's yeah. You can see how much effect it has it has to the machine that you clean inside the keyboard and. Uh, clean the case and everything. So it will be very interesting to see the results uh, after this one is uh, renovated and recapped and um, maybe put a old 30 accelerator card and everything. So I have the Amiga test kit I want to try on this machine. On the top of this. The top drive is reading. Let us try the CIA. Old test pass the keyboard. So the easiest way to do a keyboard test is just to lay my finger here and do 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 do. You can see here on the test that everyone work out. Next row. So on this machine all of the keys is working actually. You can do set the, the clock later. Channels working. Head calibration test. Cylinder zero is okay. Cylinder forty, okay. Seventy nine, okay. Everything okay. Okay, finish him. Shadow of the Beast is here. Give me the game. I wish to see it. And it's real slow. What's going on here? I just have to see how the game plays. Yes. Music is really very slow. My favorite game, so of course I have the original in um, mint condition. You can find this game in eBay. the things we are going to do now we are going to power off this machine we are going to do a recap as fast as possible before we have some and as we can see here. is that this machine is uh, dirty look inside be between the keys here <laughs> The keys are very dirty. So what we are going to do now is to clean up this Amiga 1200 and give it a nice recap. The machine already don't have any screws so it's very easy to deassemble it. There we go and then we can lift away the keyboard and remove the connector for the light for the you can see there is a lot of uh, dust in between these keys so this will make a big so difference here is a two gigabyte hard drive and here is a four megabyte uh, ram expansion we also have the fpu 
So uh, what I will do now is to remove this uh, hard drive. Remove all the. I'm now wearing gloves because I know this metal shield will get very rusty and fall on my fingerprints in the future if I don't use gloves. The drive seems to be working fine. The case is missing all of the screws. So this will be a very easy deassembly and the, the metal tabs. So that is the floppy drive. Let us take a peek inside here. Top case. Dirty. We'll clean it up. So this is the 4 megabyte uh, expansion board for the Amiga 1200 with the FPE. And battery back it up clock. Oh, I think the whole board should be able to come out of this case. There we go, and this is the complete board. So uh, this is the bottom cover. It uh, has some stains from this uh, bottom here. It's not so much yellow, it's actually quite white. So this will also be in the clean up. So now we can reach to the tap, which was bent uh, downwards here on the back side. And hopefully we, hopefully we can now release this top shielding. There we go. So that is the top shielding. So I will now have to release this uh, this uh, bottom case, and then I have to screw open all, all of those screws on this line to go ahead and do that. So that's it. That's all of the back screws. This motherboard should come uh, right out of this uh, metal shielding. You can see there is some um, proof of uh, fingerprints here, so somebody else has been here before us. There is some spill uh, near the second. Um, second. Um, Joystick port. So let us now take a look around on the board and uh, take a look on the, take a closer look on the caps. So you can see on this uh, cling of the caps here that this uh, it looks great actually. I cannot see any corrosion on this uh, hard drive ID port pins, which is uh, very usual if this uh, little cap here uh, leak. This one. The smaller caps tend to leak much more often than the bigger one. So this area looks uh, quite clean. The solders are uh, quite shiny. There is no evidence for a leak actually in this area. Let's take a closer look on this one. This is also looks pretty good. And this one... Uh, I'm not sure if it's dust or... Yeah, it has some dust there. And the one behind the keyboard connector has... Um... Yeah, it looks good also. And those two looks fine. So this is a um, over 30 years old board with the very old electrolyt capacitors and they have... Uh... Not been leaking actually. It's like these two pins here are uh, linked together. Uh, 
and look, they are going to this chip here and are soldered to the number three, four leg here from the right. So now I have this board here ready for recapping and I have uh, the caps here. This is a new kit I bought in um, from Sweden actually. Contains all of the caps needed for this uh, Amiga 1200. So, what I do is just uh, I like to just uh, do like this do, 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 do. and uh, abracadabra. <laughs> I want to do is to add some flux to each or every one of these uh, solid ones. We can make the desoldering so much easier. I also am going to be removing this. Uh, Fastener, keyboard cable fastener. I'm going to start here. So let us just give that a little zoom. I'm using the method of two soldering irons. That is definitely the best way. I will just turn on the light on my. So let us go ahead and remove the first one. That's it, so easy. Find the number two. Number two, we Sweet. cannot smell any fish smell yet. Just do this one. And this one. Try to be very careful here and without burning any plastics. Let's see if that is possible this time. It's quite fast to remove these cups in this model. So that is all of the SMD caps desoldered. So what we want to do now is to Clean away the pads. So then we have to use our solder rig. There is already enough flux on this board, so I won't apply anymore. Let's see if that works. And it seems to do. Sorry, I'm working outside of the camera. Working here. Pulling 
our way towards this one. I'm going to start the uh, inwards here. Do the inner um, caps first. So, uh, of course, uh, first I apply some flux on the pad. Let me do that on all of these pads. Yes, like so. Now I'm going to place the cap on the right positions. So this one, 100 uh, farms will be here. Yes, like so. And there is our first cap on its place. Try to put it as nice as possible. Like so. That will be nice. Very nice. Like the hair is a twenty two left or so. It has lots of pads, but what I want to do is to push it more backwards here, so I have more space for the, the very hot iron to get behind this keyboard projector on this side. Can't see the, without burning any plastic sit nearby. There we go. All of the SMD caps are now completely soldered into the board. So now the only thing remains is the hole through caps. So this is the complete
completely recap job done. All of the capacitors is been replaced. It's time for a bath. All the covers are soaked in water now, and I will uh, just let them stay here and uh, continue to work with the keyboard. So this is the keyboard. It's very dirty. It has a lot of dust inside here, and uh, it's uh, a lot of dirt uh, in between these keys. So, we are going to remove all of those uh, keys from the keyboard here. So I have a container here which, uh, where I put all of the springs. So we just pick them off. And we're going to give them a very nice clean. So I also have this... Uh, Key extractor. It's also a great uh, tool for extracting those keys. All of the keys are now removed and we can see that this is absolutely gross. So I will just remove all of these bars here. You get a real good boil in some really hot water later on. So I have all of the springs here in this um, container here and all of the keys are just laying here. So what I want to do now is to remove this black tape over the keyboard and then screw those screws behind here. Now when we have released all of those screws on the back cover here, this will be ready to just lift off. And what will remain then is the Keyboard PCB. This PCB I will not do anything with because the keys pressed very well. It felt very good and nice, so I will not use any IPR or isopropanol on these ones. This will, that can actually maybe this side I will just wipe off with a wet cloth. Otherwise, this side I will not touch. Don't use uh, alcohol on those uh, pads here. It will uh, actually. Make them thinner and eventually destroy them, make them burst. So now we have all of this. Um, we have to remove this, um, this um, caps lock light. This one. And then I just like to turn this upside down very fast. And there we go. And we have all of those. Plungers. So now this is ready to just be put down in the bathtub. So back to the bathtub, we are going to clean those uh, cover shields. Get away this uh, rusty this coloring here. I just scrub and scrub and scrub, I guess. Now you can see on those uh, legs here, you can see how much difference they will get when you scrub them. See that? Compare with this one. This one is scrubbed, it looks like brand new. So let's do the other one.
Look on that. Like new. So now all of the keys are going in the box. There's also all of the keys that is cut in. This is uh, for washing the clothes. Maybe like so. So here we are in the bathtub and we are cleaning each of those keys. This is a really time consuming process. So I realized that I will not bore you guys with a video of cleaning every single cake caps for the Mina 1200. But I will just show you the process. So we can see the key gets very very clean. So the end of this process of cleaning those keys caps. And it has been a really slow and boring process. But the result don't think matter is the, the result you will get and that the result will be extremely good and here is all of the keys ready cleaning this this one give that a scrub now we are just flushing the parts off get rid of all of the soap all of the cleaned keys and we can see that they have some yellowing that they are completely clean. That is the most important part right now. Shiny and curly. This is the spring turn to have a clean. So I will just add some lots of the dishwasher soap here and just let this soak in for a while. Fats and everything will just come off the springs. Lots of uh, dust collects on those, so it's nice to have them cleaned as well. They are pretty yellow. This is the way they should look like. And you can see that <laughs> they need some uh, bleaching. So for that uh, purpose I have this uh, hair fit peroxide. But back here I will just clean some of those. I began peroxide the shampoo inside. I think that is a lot. And we are just going to throw down the two caps into this bag. What we want to do is to massage a little bit here. So the keys get exposed of this peroxide. Miracle. So what we want to do now is to put this in the sun. So back to these uh, key plungers. Uh, you remember we had uh, the arrow key, left arrow key was uh, some kind of loose. So it's stuck but it's wiggling. And the reason for that is this. It was broken this plunger. So either it has to be replaced or maybe this can be glued back in place I'm going to try to glue this one back on here okay I don't know what else I can do but I know I have to clean my fingers it's full of super glue so for the keyboard membrane, I want to use a towel and just clear water and just wipe it off. I am not going to use some alcohol or anything on these pads here because that they are so fragile, they will get destroyed. 
by doing so, so just a damp cloth and wipe it off. That is my advice. Just like so. To the other side. This is the clean side anyway, so just like so. That's it. No more treatment for this. So this is the result of just wiping it off with a damp cloth. It gets perfectly clean. No need to use some alcohol on this one. So here we have the plunger I was gluing together. It would be really stupid if this uh, fell off after I press on the key back on here. So just reinforcement there. So for cleaning the motherboard we are in the bathtub again and we are applying some dishwasher soap here and I'm just going to scrub this whole board. It will be so nice. Get rid of all of the flux residue and all of the dust and shit. There could be on this board. I don't know if you can do this in your country because here in Norway we have uh, such a clean water that is no problem to do what we are doing here right now. But anyway, the important thing to do is to, to get it dry really fast afterwards. Okay. Now I have dried the board with the hair dryer and you can see it's very very I'm clean. Put the board down there and spray it with some electronical clean which contains uh, isopropyl alcohol so it will make it dry fast. So what I am going to do is to just soak in this board with this spray. From every corner. Get it good underneath the components. Then use the toothbrush again. So I think that is enough. Now we spray inside these connect connectors. Give them a scrub as well. Again, just soak it in. So now just soak it one more time and let it stay there for a good amount of time. Just like so. So here is the board and we are just going to spray it so that the alcohol will just blow downwards here on the board. traces of any water left. Just like so. So here is the motherboard. It's already dried by itself. The electronic cleaner contains isopropanol, so it dries pretty well. So here is the finished clean board. Dried and it's superbly clean. So 
now I think it's time to put the proof of recapping here in a sticker. It's a very nice place for that uh, right there on this uh, revision of the Mega 1200. Usually my revision I'm most used to don't have this part of the board. It's just missing. Let's just place that. Protect this uh, spring from uh, rust in the future. There we go, everything is oiled. So the sand bath today was not uh, literally any success, so I have put uh, these keycaps into the oven. We can see that they are still quite yellow. I don't think this works. So, next up is this floppy drive. We are going to give it a nice clean. So, first of all, we are going to remove this uh, bracket. <laughs> Not this one, but this bracket need to come off. So, we can open the top shielding here. Dust and shit from this board. So we just use a cotton pad and uh, soak it into uh, isopropanol alcohol, like so, and uh, clean off this uh, this head here very gently. Don't lift up this too hard. You will bend it open, and uh, the position of the reading head will be wrong and you will have a big problem so please be gentle with that one also around it it collects dust here so let's try to collect that to the other side Clean away all of the dust around on this plate. I think that is enough for the head cleaning. Now we are going to try to work our way inside the drive to collect the dust as much as we can. You can see. There is plenty of it. You must remember this is a 30 year old computer and I have just bought it so I don't know the history of the service of this uh, machine so it's always I like to do when I buy a machine like this all is to clean them up right away. It's a nice winter hobby. Uh, metal bearing here which moves this uh, reader head back and forward so we want to remove the old grease as much as we can before we apply some new the top cover I just uh, washed with the um, regular uh, dishwasher uh, top 
a rough bunch. Also the floppy cable itself we will dry off with the dam cloth just to get rid of all of the dust here. Next uh, thing to do is to um, put new grease to this uh, reel there. To the so for greasing uh, my floppy dry I have found my uh, Amiga 500 um, parts machine and I'm going to connect the floppy drive to this machine I'm going to do a test program which makes the motor head move of the floppy drive so I can grease in every part of the screw So then it's time to reassemble this uh, floppy drive station which is fully operational and um, cleaned and uh, re-greased full service. So what I'd like to do is just to attach this to the side again. This nut just go into this uh, hose and just flip it over and push it down. That. Everything is uh, back in position here. The reason I wear this clothes is because if not, I will put very much fingerprints on this device. Like those ones, someone has been here previously and left these marks, these dark marks, fat marks from the fatty fingers. So then the question is, do I remember where this was positioned? Mm -hmm. Actually I don't. <laughs> so I have to take a break and look up the video which I recorded. <laughs> so I found out where this bracket were mounted before, so I have just mounted it back. So now we have a nice clean working Mega 1200 floppy drive. Next thing we are going to look at is these uh, keycaps which I have put in this um, hair fit uh, peroxide 12% uh, solution. And I must say I am kind of disappointed because I cannot see any specific uh, di <laughs> difference on these keycaps. I don't. Uh, I have put them in outside in the sunshine for 4 hours, they have been in the oven on 50 degrees for 5-6 hours, but they are still yellow, so I will just let them uh, stay in this bag here for a week or so. Let us just flip one key so we can see, you can see it's still yellow. So <clears throat> let us take a look now to see if they are any brighter but I can still see some yellowing in these keys they have been laying in this uh, <coughs> shampoo for a quite uh, for some couple of days it doesn't seem to rock for me so this is exactly one week ahead so I'm going to take out one of the keys to see if there is any difference. So this is the big zero key. Oh yes, it's a huge difference. It's actually very right. It's like new. Damn, it worked. So this is uh, one week in this shampoo. And the key is like new. It's very brittle. <laughs> Okay, so here are all of the keycaps after a week in this shampoo and I believe this is a big difference. They look like brand new. There is all of the brown uh, keycaps. They are also looking uh, very very good now. You 
together with the white ones, which are white again. So now I'm uh, going to reassemble the keyboard and put back all of those leaders. I glued which was one of the arrow keys, left arrow. So let's just close that and go there. So oh, that is all of the keycaps, then is all the only one thing remaining and that is the cap lock lights. And it's important we don't uh, forget this one. Just there. Yeah. So we just have to lay this. And position it nice with these holes, like so. Slide this um, ribbon cable through the hole here. And this should fit with the, all of the holes, just like so. so. Now we want to add some screws here. One screw, and then just continue to add all of the screws here. You don't want to over tighten them. There we go, all of the screws are assembled back on this keyboard. So this comes out very nice. All we need to do now is to add the springs here and pull back the keycaps. But before we do the keycaps, we want to put back the main board into its place. Into this nice and clean um, and here is the renovated uh, motherboard with the new caps. They put that in the place. Just like so, then we have to put back all of those uh, screws here behind here. So let us go ahead and do that. Don't over tight them now because uh, I want to insert all of the screws first. So we have the perfect alignment. Now all of these uh, screws are in place. I just want to tight each one of them a little bit. So now I want to 
insert a new hard drive into this uh, Amiga because the, the old one had some read errors and uh, some of the games did not work and so on so I have something interesting here I have a CF card with the Amiga OS 3.2 and I have new ROMs for the Amiga 1200 so this is the high and the high on the Amiga 1200 is down and you see that uh, these rooms are shorter so we will have to put the end here on this line you are missing one pin but it is okay the high and the same with the low which goes on the top there we go Their position, which is the one and two joints, that is a CF card. And we can see a red light starting to glow from the CF card adapter here. As we can see, the machine booted the strike up. And I have not connected any mouse or keyboard here, so this is the only test that I can have. That we can see that the machine is perfectly working, so this is now ready for a complete assembly. Now it's time to put the main board into this uh, new cleaned case. So just put back the motherboard to its case. There we go, and we should have a screw down there. So let us just add some screws here. It's perfect. So the next to install is the floppy drive which we have cleaned. And I don't quite understand this uh, phone. One is there, so red goes there. It should be. So the phone is just like so. I don't see any different way to do it. There we go, all of the screws are in place. So the next thing we should do now is to assemble back the K on the keyboard. Now I'm setting up all of the springs so they are ready to be mounted. They are... We need to be sure that we have all of them in a single unit. They are oiled in the VD40. So we are going to assemble the keyboard. And the first thing I like to do is put it back in place. Those metal bars here. I'll start with these keycaps which have these metal bars. Like so. Then I'm going to wear my gloves. So that is a space bar. Now I'm going to put the springs on the place. So that was the space 
спокойно. What we want to do now is to install this keyboard back to this Amiga. Like so. And the final part will be the top card. Which also is cleaned. But before I do that, I have to attach the light. Now we are going to close this hatch. So. Flip the Amiga over and insert three screws. Yeah. No. No dirt inside the key anymore. This key is not loose anymore. So here is the speed test of this beautiful Amiga 1200 and we have amazingly 1.32 MIPS <laughs> but the outcome of the renovation is just fantastic. I have this Blizzard 1230 card. So let us go ahead and unbox it. There we go. There is that nice and secure. And now we have been 8.88 MIPS. I was expecting 10 MIPS. So let's try to run something.
Okay, so that's one uh, for game just fine the calibration test. Cylinder zero is okay. Cylinder forty is just okay. And the device is fine. So now we can do our comparison with this uh, freshly renovated Amiga 1200 with this uh, the one I have shown before, which is also renovated before. Uh, this one is renovated before, and this was the the newest one. So as we can see, they are both. This one is uh, nothing is retrobrighted on this one, but the keys are retrobrighted on this one, and they are very similar now. They have the same quality. Yes, very nice. So I have shown out this uh, old 30 card and uh, showed in a pie storm. So with this PyStorm we have a great graphical interface for the workbench and of course the speed is uh, outstanding. So let us now try to perform a speed test. With the PyStorm 32. <laughs> And we have insanely 889.77 MIPS. It's a virtual Amiga, yes, of course it is. So let us now try to run a demo on the PyStorm. Let's see. Let's try to run this one. Execute.
the moon runs uh, very well. So let us try to find the <coughs> other demo here to try. I have some downloaded demos here, maybe we should try the unique origins. So let us try to run that. But this is not a Weho the load demo, it runs uh, directly. So let us see how that works.
so the demo was working just fine. So I'm very satisfied with the Amiga 1200. It has now a great speed, it has uh, everything I need. So I'm very very satisfied. So thank you very much for watching my video and welcome back to another time to check out if I have some new videos to show to you.